I don't mean to alarm you, but I think it's pretty evident that we have the perfect camera in our hands. Is it doable? We found it? I think we have. I think we have. Wow. The dynamic range. A strange company sent me a strange product and the synchronicities that brought this thing into our life is a story for another world. Let's discover it together. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Okay, so the odds that I'm in focus right now are 0%. We have a flippy hack mirror with blinding sunlight. Peaking unavailable. Punch-ins, not realistic. Warpy shit, that's available. So try to wrap your mind around this. My good buddy from the States sent us this camera, the Panasonic S1. Just, here you go, have this thing. I don't feel like it's too heavy for me. Take it. Are you believing that right now? And then this company reaches out to me before I even get this in the mail. I don't, the only logical explanation is they've tapped my email account, they've been listening to me for years, and they're like, oh, you're getting that camera in about uh, a week and a half? All right, let's send you a lens to test it. I'm somewhat adequately exposed in direct harsh sunlight. Uh, how is that possible? So this company reaches out to me and says, do you want to test this lens for L mount? And I hadn't even received the camera yet. I was like, what? The perfect lens too. It's a cinema lens. So I'm therefore a cinematographer who cinematographs in the evening and sometimes in the morning hours. It really is tough to judge the focus without a flippy screen. This mirror hat, oh, there it, oh, I got shoulder peeking. Oh, look at me. Am I in focus then? Uh, how come I don't have beard peeking? That's what I need. That's what I really need. Hi, I'm a movie. I've been seen in such movies as the, the lamb that could and how many bushes does it take? Classics, cult class, there's a fly. So we're on the Viltrox 20 mil Tony II cinema lens. It's got gears, there's gears on it. We can stop down the aperture in a smooth-like fashion to reveal, that's the focus ring. That's the focus ring. As I was saying earlier, we can stop down and Panasonic compensates immediately, pretty much, for the darkness by exposing my face perfectly. Where, where are we at on that, Penny? Penny boy? What are these? What are these I'm doing? We good now? Tony, Tony 16. When Tony was 16 years old, this is what his videos look like. Okay, we got it extended out. Do you have any idea how heavy this is? The lens alone is like 790 grams. I just weighed this whole contraption with the Panasonic S1, this flippy mirror, and this heavy ass tripod, 2,340 grams. And yet due to the monkey strength program, I barely even feel like I was, is this a GoPro? I have to keep checking. Just, no, it's not the GoPro. It felt like it. So if I was to walk normally, does the warpy shit come upon us? Just please say, I can feel it. My hand's just like doing all kinds of things it shouldn't. I would laugh if I somehow nailed focus. It's so hard with the reflection. But if I did, there's no way I could vlog with it. We'll do a studio test, but I'm being honest with you, it's not because they sent me this lens, but I'm thinking, Viltrox, they're the sleeper giants of this lens world. I love third parties that give you the equivalent lens, maybe not quite as corner sharp. Or is it? Maybe the odd bit of chromatic liberations. But for like half the price, half the weight, like they're making some really interesting glass for the Fuji system. I want to buy into Fuji X-T4 land just because of that 23.14.4. You haven't heard of that one? And the 
wider one. I forget the if it was 11 or 13 or something, 1.4. Imagine the glory. It'd be like this, only lighter. It's not heavy, per se. <clears throat> Is there tonne? It's a cinema lens, so it's designed for tonne. Is there focus breathing? I keep forgetting it's switched. Usually the aperture rings in the back, I think. Every lens company switches it. Why did I do that? Now I'm never gonna hit focus again. How close can we go? Let us reveal ourselves in full closeness. Where is it? Where is that focus? I feel like it's there. I should have cleaned that screen off. That's, that's for sure. That's just a dusty bunch of shit. It's a dusty dust bunny colony over there. But apparently for the Fuji system, Viltrox is autofocusing pretty good. Actually better than Fuji lenses because they built the more modern. I don't know what Fuji did in the way back. But they're like, okay, let's focus fast for photography. How do you even do it? Focus fast for photography, but video wise, unusable. How did you come up with that technology? We don't even have it now. They sent me another lens as well. We'll have to test that one. I feel like I'm really dark. Is that the truth? Panasonic just exposing for the sky. Doesn't care what's happening in this region. I think with this kind of system, if you just go somewhere and sit down and then do a little segment here, Stabilization isn't so bad. I've been very unimpressed with Panasonic full-frame stabilization. The GH5, fantastic. G9, even better. Olympus, wow. What did he say? Ooh, that's a lot of sugar. Get on that keto diet, my friend. And then you move to the next scene. You're good to go. Who needs to walk? Why are you in a rush? And yes, of course, I put the stabilization set to 20 mils. People ask me the weirdest shit. I make a lot of user errors, but give me some credit. Yes, we're on the latest firmware always, and we're set to the right stabilization mode. I know it looks like maybe we're not, due to the unusability factor of it, but we're good. We're good. So let's go to the studio and see what it's like indoors. Is it the new best thing? So here we have the studio shot. A lot of people don't realize that I spent $47,000 on this place. It was on sale. Oh, God. Uh, the tonne is dignified. That's a smooth looking tonne. That is some smooth stuff. Let's bring it on in here. Let's get on in here and notch. That's the wrong way. That's not the right way at all. Oh, that's not very flattering looking. Oh, boy. Oh, this is a mistake. This is an acne-ridden mistake. Should have waited for my skin to clear up. <laughs> oh boy, I'm on a high beef diet. That's the opposite of good skin right there. But the tone, that's remarkable. It's tough to tell right there. That left eye, that's in focus. <laughs> this is the closest focusing distance. It's a good vlog. It's a good shot. Just looking on the screen, it looks sharp as a tack at F2. Wide open, sharp as a tack, right from the get-go. Dare we stop it down, probably sharpens right up there. Oh, now we gotta compensate. Actually, shutter to normal. This is probably what I should have done. What are we at? We're at 2.8, it's probably sharper than it needs to be. I'm actually afraid to stop down to 5.6, the sharpness zone. Here's a four. You know what sucks? I paid $250 for the V-Log update to the S1. Goodbye, zebras. See you later. Can't use them. What are we missing here? And the waveform monitor? Oh, that's superior. Oh, good. Doesn't show up through HDMI. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's pure guessing game now. Exposure? No idea what I'm looking for. I see lights back there. I'm like, okay, bring them down a bit. I look at my face, I'm thinking, Shadows are good. I don't know what I'm doing. My cameras have revealed themselves. They're no longer tone. Let's turn them back into tone. What a fantastic lens. I mean, out in the field, it's too heavy. It's way too heavy. And if I had the S1H, I would have the flippy screen. Then I could judge focus better. I could vlog with it. I think that's what it was designed for. 
vloggers, but I've always thought this was a good focal length for YouTubers. Just you could have this on a tripod on your desk, and technically since we're so close to it, you could theoretically have your shotgun mic right on there, especially ones that zoom out far. It's a great run and gun setup if you run and gun in your home, which I do often. Just perfect. Whereas if you go for the Voigtlander 35 mil, then it's like, okay, it takes time to set up. This I can just easily see focus. If we switch over to the Voigtlander, is it really much better? I know the wideness distorts my noggin, my schnauzer. Let's see if 35 is better. Actually, before we do that, Canon EOS R at 20 mil, 2.8. We're similar. We are similar. Which looks better? Are you blown away? We should probably stop it down to 2.8. I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to touch it. Why does Canon make it teal? That's green. It's a green light. Get with the times. It's your problem. Is there better highlight dignity on the Panasonic? Was it worth the $250 upgrade? Or was I looking at the Lumix lettering while I was speaking? If I'm being 100% honest with you, I'd probably trade in this S1 any day of the week for this. Any day. Just the autofocus, the ease of use, the flippy screen of life. Fantastic. Ooh, look at it. Oh my god, it's art. That's what I do now. That's what I'm forced to do with the penny boy. Penny. I'm just curious, we're in C-Log right now in EOS original color scheme. That green light is not green. Let's flip back from EOS to whatever the other one is. Okay, now we're in neutral. That is so much better looking. That's green now. Now we have accurate colors on the Canon. I have no idea how to judge exposure in any camera. Apparently I'm a moron. I heavily relied on those zebras, I'm not gonna lie to you. And now that I don't have them, I'm lost. I'm in the African savanna on my own. There's lions, there's hyenas. I'm 40% sure that this is not exactly what Viltrox had in mind while sending me the lens, but we had to dig deep. So let's switch to the Voigtlander briefly just to see 20 mil versus 35. Is there a pleasing noticeable difference? So here's the Voigtlander 35 mil Tony 1.8 just to have some semblance of sharpness. If I'm being honest with you, looking at it, it's much better, the 35 mil. It's just the focal length is a little weird. I used to think, as a YouTuber, we wanted these fat-ass wide lenses. It's a glorious looking lens, though. Look at that S. That is fantastic. These actually hurt a little bit, turning. They're not designed for this. Cinema shit. You're designed to have it on a gear doing stuff for you. I changed my mind so much when it comes to this stuff. Like, what's the perfect focal length for YouTube? Because I know photographers, if they're going to take a portrait, it's like 85 mil and up. Some are going to 135, but you can't really do that for YouTube. You could with a long extension cord for your mic and still, what a pain in the ass. That's why I was thinking, like, wide is so fun. Like, you just turn it on, you're right here. You can get good audio with the mic right there. It's not very flattering to the face, though, as we've seen. The beauty. That's just sweaty and greasy. It's beauty on some planet. But putting my ego aside, fantastic lens. Like, just sharp, wide open. Manual focus smoothness. No focus breathing. Like, I see why they use the cinema lens. That's why I had to accept it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> For the Panasonic system, it's like, not bad. And outside, there wasn't too much warpy stuff. A little bit, it was there, but you could slowly walk your way through life. I didn't try digital because I'm sick of Panasonic digital. It does nothing for anybody. What I didn't test was Sunstars. Oh, let's test. Okay, here's something interesting. We're at Tony 16. And now we see the lens breathing. When you stop it way down, I see your secrets. I see them. I see them good. Am I in focus? Where's the sun stars? Ah, uh, you need a light source and then hiding it. Trust me, I know how to make sun stars. Oh, you think I never made a sun star in my life?
sun stars. I don't even like sun stars personally, so who cares about all that? How's this drama? Lowered the angle, moved it back, then you got some drama in your life. This is actually a decent shot. I like it. Uh, uh, there's a lot of junk on the desk that I should have taken care of, but if you do that before you start filming, you might have something here. So thank you so much, Phil Chalks. I'll put links down below. Affiliate links, of course. I don't even know if it's available yet. <laughs> I googled this thing and I was like, there's nothing. Nobody has this lens. I might be the first. Fantastic lens. So, Phil Chalks, company to look out for, in my opinion, especially those Fuji lenses. I can't wait to test that 13mm 1.4. Is it stable? I doubt it. They need stabilization. All wide angle lenses need stabilization in the future. This would have been way too heavy. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to leave. Thanks for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribe for more videos. I'm going to say that.